Good evening. I, I ask you all to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, the governor of the state of Illinois has declared a gubernatorial disaster proclamation in response to the COVID-19 outbreak and all of the city is covered by the disaster area. In light of the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, the mayor of the city of Elmers has determined that an in-person meeting for the September 20, 2021 city council meeting may not be practical or prudent in light of the disaster. All of the aldermen of the city council participating in the September 20th city council meeting, whatever or wherever their physical location shall be verified and determined that they can hear one another and can hear discussion and all testimony during the meeting. Um, as I think we'll discover in about a moment, we don't have any remote participants, but I'll ask uh, Clerk Tamer to now call the roll. Olamski? Here. Jensen? Here. Saluda? Here. Cahill? Here. Nudera? Here. Park? Here. Conquest? Here. Bastido? Here. Mulliner? Here. Brennan? Here. Marimus? Here. Deuter? Here. Dunn? Here. Hill? Here. 14 present, zero absent. 14 present, zero absent. We have a quorum. Um, are there any announcements uh, from the dais this evening? There being none, we'll move on to item three, receipt of written communications from the public. Does anyone have a written communication that they would like to deliver to the council? If so, raise your hand. There being none, we'll move to item 5.1, public forum. Uh, this is an opportunity for any person to address the city council on any matter of concern in view of the business we have before us and out of respect for other people who may want to speak we limit your um, go first we do. Uh, all right hold off on that thought we've got a very important intervening item we have a uh, presentation to make. So I'll ask the uh, people who are going to be receiving the proclamations to join me at the podium over here. Okay. All right, we've got uh, Larry Stuber and Kathy Watts from the uh, Elmer's Yorkfield Food Pantry. And um, it's my pleasure to read and present this proclamation to you. Whereas September has been designated as the month for national, a national awareness campaign called Hunger Action Month intended to inspire the public to take action on the serious issue of hunger and whereas hundreds of Elmhurst families are in need of food assistance every month, with 10.8% of DuPage households uncertain of where their next meal may come from, and whereas Elmhurst Yorkfield Food Pantry is a hunger relief organization serving residents of Elmhurst and seven surrounding communities, and whereas last year almost 5,000 individuals received over 15, 415 tons of food through the efforts of the Elmhurst Yorkfield Food Pantries volunteers, staff, and community volunteers. And whereas 500 volunteers dedicated 15,000 hours last year to ensure Elmhurst Yorkfield Food Pantry could remain open without interruption throughout the pandemic, including special service for Thanksgiving and Christmas meals. And whereas Elmhurst Yorkfield Food Pantry partners with the community to provide nutritious, healthy groceries through its food program 
to help people work towards self-sufficiency. Now, therefore, I, Scott Levin, mayor of the city of Elmhurst, do hereby declaim, proclaim the month of September as Hunger Action Month, and I'm pleased to present this proclamation to you. A little bit of this. Would either of you like to say a few words? I'm Larry Studer. I'm the board president for the Elmhurst Yorkfield Food Pantry. Operating the pantry under normal conditions offers a lot of challenges to our operating group, but none as serious as operating under the COVID-19 pandemic. When the pandemic hit, the number of people seeking uh, food doubled. We, um, the food became, we had food shortages at the time. It was hard to get food. A lot of our volunteers left for health reasons. And uh, Kathy Watts, the executive director and her group, put together a plan to keep the pantry open. While a lot of pantries closed, ours stayed open, and she'll expound a little bit on what she did. Okay, thank you. So I just really briefly want to thank the community for your generosity and support. Uh, without the community's support, we could not do the work that we do. We are humbled by your confidence in our mission to provide food, compassion, and hope to the community. And we certainly want to extend our heartfelt thanks to our legion of volunteers who worked under extraordinary conditions during the pandemic to keep the pantry open. Thank you. Thank you both for your efforts. Thank you, and the second proclamation, uh, Sherry Hogue and Susie Sands, I think, are here. Hello. Seen you for a while. Um, so uh, a similar proclamation, because it's still Hunger Action Month, even, uh, and we have a couple of very fine organizations here that are helping out our community. So let me read the next proclamation. Uh, whereas September has been designated as the month of a national awareness campaign called Hunger Action Month, intended to inspire the public to take action on the serious issue of hunger, and whereas hundreds of Elmhurst families are in need of food assistance every month, with 10.8% of DuPage households uncertain of where their next meal may come from, and whereas United Community Concerns Association, UCCA, has been serving the Elmhurst community since 1978, providing food refer referrals and services to Elmhurst District 205's most financially disadvantaged children in their families in an effort to fight hunger. And whereas UCCA is a 100% volunteer organization that has worked to provide $138,642 in food and food certificates to families in 2021, and whereas UCCA has provided aid to 305 families and 81 seniors and hosted eight mobile food pantries in 2021, whereas during last year's holiday food drive, UCCA distributed more than 600 boxes of food, weighing more than seven tons to Elmhurst, to, to local families, now, therefore, I, Scott Levin, Mayor of the City of Elmhurst, do once again proclaim the month as Hunger Action Month, and I congratulate both of you. My name is Sherry Haug, and I am the new United Community Concerns Association president. Um, I feel like Susie Sands' name has become um, consistent with UCCA. If you heard what our mayor said about us being around for 44 years, Susie had the reins of this for 22. She has created the organization that we, that we are with the help of some very, very dedicated folks who I just have to say Mary Jo Corbett's name tonight. Um, she started as a district employee and has remained faithful to us through these years. We do only provide food and food services for families who have children in the district and are able to work hand in hand with the school district and that is another thing we're so proud of and happy that we can do. We too rely on our volunteers 
And after this crazy year where everyone needed more food and food services, um, we are thankful that everyone stepped up and were able to help us with that. So thank you all. This is a great proclamation. Susie, do you have anything to add? No? <laughs> so thank you all very much. You may recall we were talking about public forum recently, so we'll pick up there. The only thing I would add is if, when your name is called, if you would state your name, address is optional, but it may help us follow up with you if need be. Uh, with that introduction, Clerk Tamer, do we have anyone who signed up for public forum? Yes, Mayor. We have John Jevitz. Mr. Jevitz, if you want to take that microphone over there, or if you want to use the mobile microphone, which is on the podium, if that's easier for you, there's a little switch on the bottom. And, but do state your name. Uh, I think while, while you're presenting, you can take it off. Switch on the bottom. Help them out, Emily, there. Slide. It slides side to side, John. That's all right. I don't need the microphone. Uh, you do, because the, the studio audience is not as sufficient. You know. uh, my college roommate, Dr. Paul Kling, the other day came in. He hasn't been here for almost a month. Words out of his mouth. Wow. Does Elmhurst ever not stop getting better? He's like, this is unbelievable. John, I've been coming here for 35 years, and every time I come here, more new things are being built. Everything they're doing is amazing. So when I think of Elmhurst, I think of two words that I want you guys to know. Thank you. What an amazing job you do. Uh, I can't tell you how proud I am to live in the number one community in the state of Illinois. I got Bill, I got the fire chief, Mike. I mean, Mayor Scott, Jim, all you guys, what an amazing job by all the aldermen, everyone. I can't thank you enough. So doing the right thing when no one's watching, I feel like that's what all you guys do, as well as actually our, our fire, our police, our city workers, everybody. And I think that everyone in the state will follow Elmhurst's lead because they know that what Elmhurst does is always the right thing. So as a reminder and a thank you to you guys from Character Counts, you each will have a Character Counts t-shirt to remind you of what we think of you when we think of the aldermen, the mayor, the city, all the workers, that you guys always do the right thing, even if no one's watching. Thank you very much. Go Elmhurst. John Jevitz. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, is anyone next person That's signed? All that's that's signed all right. Up, yeah. All right. Is there anyone in the uh, who's uh, in the audience um, who would like to speak at public forum but did not have the opportunity to sign in? Mr. Dungan. Ladies and gentlemen, Elmhurst, uh, City Council, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Grabowski, Mr. Agger, thank you very much for your time. Um, the last speaker, Doug Jev, who I've known for a very long time, is very influential in my life. Um, character does count. Counts a lot. Um, Elmhurst is a great city. I don't know if it can continue to be a great city. There's a few questions, I think, that are right now going on in my life. Uh, I want to thank everyone that's came out and seen our property and everything that's going on with the Roberto's Elmhurst project. Um, some of you haven't came out or haven't met with us. I encourage you to do so. I also encourage you to read the majority report that will come out soon. 
I also encourage you to vote no. <laughs> vote no and change the code so that no one else ever has to go through this ever again. No neighborhood. No one deserves to do, go through this. I've been through a lot of stressful things in my life. I have to tell you, this is, this is top two. Um, I've never thought that it would come to certain things like this, the things that I get told by my lawyers, the things that have gone on over the past year. You know, Mr. Levin, you and uh, Mark Daniel, one of my attorneys, you guys have gone back and forth in the media a little bit. And you said have proof. My family has proof. One of my attorneys, Bill Graft, and by the way, Mr. Ecker, Bill Graft tells Mr. Strino to say hello for him. Uh, my best thought for you is that you can restore faith in working as a true leader. And you can discourage approval of a project like this, Mr. Levin. As an attorney, you can surely know not to spread fears of litigation. If you want to convince us, lead. Use your head. Make sure the city does not approve a project that clearly doesn't belong and has never belonged. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Anyone else who would like to speak? All right, there being none, we will close public forum. Agenda item, <coughs> the consent agenda, we will remove from there. We'll need some correction on 6.1, so I'm going to remove that from the consent agenda. Is there any other item on the consent agenda that any alderman would like to remove for further discussion or to vote against? Alderman Polumsky. 6.7. 6.7. Anyone else? All right. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda minus items <coughs> 6.1 and 6.7? Alderman Toludo, second. Alderman Jensen. Tamer, if you would call the roll, please. I do need to read the. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Okay. 6.1 is removed. Uh, 6.2 minutes of the regular meeting of the Elmer City Council on September 7, 2021. 6.3 accounts payable September 16, 2021. Total $4,877,176.68. 6.4 report approval of an amendment to the city's personnel handbook. 6.5 report fire department foreign fire day room furniture purchase. 6.6, .6, an ordinance waiving bid and authorizing the purchase of a new firewall for the city of Elmhurst. 6.7, an ordinance extending temporary executive powers pursuant to section 3.16 of Elmhurst Municipal Code. That's been removed. That's, that's removed. Oh, that's right, that's, okay. 6.7 is removed. 6.8, an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of a non-exclusive license agreement by and between Dan Gibbons Turkey Trot Foundation <coughs> NFP in the city of Elmhurst, DuPage and Cook Counties, Illinois. 6.9, a resolution authorizing the proposed conversion of 11 city-owned vehicles to be dual fuel vehicles capable of burning gasoline or propane. 6.10, a resolution authorizing the purchase of LED streetlight fixtures and LED streetlight lamps for the city of Elmhurst, Illinois. 6.11, a resolution approving and authorizing the execution of a professional traffic engineering services agreement between the City of Elmhurst and Trans Systems Corporation for the Illinois Route 83 and Riverside Drive Feasibility Traffic Study. 6.12, a resolution regarding the filling of certain vacancies in the fire department. 6.13, a resolution authorizing the execution and approval of reimbursement agreement preliminary engineering services with Union Pacific Railroad Company. All right, thank you. We have a motion on the floor to approve the consent agenda minus items 6.1 and 6.7. Clerk Tamer. Kolumski. Aye. Jensen. Aye. Toludo. Aye. Cahill. Aye. Nudera. Aye. Park. Aye. Honquest. Aye. Bastido. Aye. Mulliner. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Verimus. Aye. Deuter. Aye. Dunn. Aye. Hill. 
Aye. 14 <clears throat> ayes, zero nays. 14 ayes, zero nays. The motion passes. <clears throat> Item 6.7, Clerk Tamer, if you'd read the ordinance. An ordinance extending temporary executive powers pursuant to section 3.16 of Elmhurst Municipal Code and pursuant to 65 ILCS 5 forward slash 11 dash 1 dash 6. All right, Alderman Plumsky, I'll put it to you. I don't have a motion. Oh, I thought you were going to, Alderman, I thought you were making the motion or you're going to discuss. All right, Alderman Moliner makes the motion. Alderman Plumsky seconds. Go ahead. Said motion. I have no. I'm totally in support of this. I think we need to continue to have, make sure you have the ability to do what you need to based on what the governor is doing at this time. All right. Um, Blumsky. I am continuing like last week since we dropped the executive order. Um, we did operate for a time without it locally. Um, I think we've learned we can continue without with proper mitigations and that if we need to make changes, we could codify them. So. Um, I'll be voting no, but I have full confidence and faith in our mayor. It is not a mayor specific decision. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other discussion? There being none, Clerk Tamer, call the roll. Palumsky? No. Jensen? Aye. Toledo? Aye. Hayhill? Aye. Aye. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> Nudera? Aye. Park? Aye. Conquest? No. Bastido? Aye. Mulliner? Aye. Brennan? Aye. Veremus? Aye. Deuter? Aye. Dunn? Aye. Hill? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 nays. 12 ayes, 2 nays. The motion passes. Uh, thank you. We completes the consent agenda. Item 7, reports and recommendations of appointed and elected officials. Um, I have a few things I'd like to report on. Um, one is um, there's been some recent crimes that have been the subject of discussion. We had a six ward resident who was attempting, uh, who confronted a person attempting to burglarize some motor vehicles in the six ward. Uh, you probably saw in the news we had a carjacking at the 7 Eleven last Friday, and then today we had an armed robbery at Thornton's. Not uh, not? No. No, no weapon on that one. All right. Thank you. So I want to first of all let uh, the public know that we share the concerns. Uh, a number of aldermen in, in particular, I know that the six word alderman contacted the police chief and talked to me about the concern with what was happening in the sixth ward. And I know Alderman Deuter wrote uh, to make sure that we were addressing this can assure the public, and I think I speak well for all of the aldermen by saying the safety of our residents is our primary concern. I met with Chief Ruth today to discuss some of the events, uh, both locally within Elmhurst and generally in the region. Um, I would say, first of all, you know, that I looked at some of the statistics and generally crime in Elmhurst is decreasing. There's a few, uh, it's not increasing, I should say. Some of it is actually decreasing. Um, actual burglary and thefts, including thefts to a motor vehicle, meaning where someone takes something from the car, are down. Uh, theft by deception uh, uh, is up significantly, uh, not a violent crime. Um, but we also specifically talked about uh, these carjackings and robbery activity. Um, a common scenario is for carjacker, carjackers um, to victimize owners of high-end vehicles. Um, they're coming, arriving in cars that were already stolen. Um, they're obviously going to neighborhoods or communities that have higher-end vehicles. Mm -hmm. And when those higher-end vehicles are taken, they're used to commit other crimes in other jurisdictions, including, I will say armed robberies, I think I'm right on that one, and even drive-by shootings. Um, Unfortunately, uh, I will say we are seeing more offenders from what I'm seeing in, uh, from what the chief has reported of, of offenders carrying weapons. Um, the carjackings that we are experiencing are not unique to us. There are many being reported in the western suburbs. 
um, after the one came out on uh, Thursday. There were two uh, the following day in Lombard. We recently, within the last two weeks, had an Elmhurst resident who was carjacked in Berkeley. Um, many have been reported in Hinsdale, Lombard, and other suburbs. I'm not throwing them under the bus on this, but there are significant, there are significant number of high-end vehicles in a city like Hinsdale. So what are we doing? Obviously, we can't comment on an ongoing investigation, of which most of these are, but I, I first of all want to reiterate that we have a very high-quality police department. They're very well-trained and equipped. Obviously, we're working in coordination with other suburban police departments in our area who are experiencing this kind of crime, and more recently, federal agencies have uh, gotten involved. As the aldermen who've been around for any length of time know that we as a council invested in certain technology that alerts us when stolen cars come into the community. And that technology allows us not to wait until something happens in the community, but to tell us that there is a vehicle coming in that we can look for that may be here for uh, purposes um, that are illegal. And it's not uncommon for our police department, our police officer, to locate that car and give chase. Um, and it's a different world given the risk attendant to high-speed chases. We often abandon the chase due to a high risk of personal injury, civil liability. Um, the data indicates that many of these high-speed chases end in crashes. Um, I suspect maybe the criminals know this, and I mean, I'm not, I'm not purporting any personal knowledge, just my thought, and maybe that's why people are fleeing more. Um, interestingly, the chief told me, gave me a statistic today that we looked at the number of pursuits in 2017. These are police pursuits. 15, 2018, 20, 2019, 10, 2020, 51, and 2021 year to date, 63. So it's a significant trend, it's a significant increase. Um, this technology we have, which is just one kind of technology, also allows us to possibly identify vehicles that have been involved in crimes in Elmhurst. And I point out that uh, for those who were around when we adopted this technology, it's now used by other surrounding communities, but we were the first one to uh, test and adapt it. Um, we sh will shift police officers as needed to respond to this. Um, I want to remind the community there are certain things that they can do. That, uh, first of all, obviously keep your eyes open. Our residents know their neighborhoods. If you, they see something suspicious, Dial 911, don't hesitate, don't be embarrassed. If it turns out to be nothing, we'd rather it be nothing than not have your call and have it be something. Um, two, if you have doorbell cameras um, or other video devices, register in our video sharing program uh, that will not give police access to your <coughs> door cam, doorbell cam or any of your video equipment, but the police will then, knowing that you're registered, contact you if something happens in your neighborhood to see, to ask you to check your own video to see if you have anything that might be significant or helpful. Um, I would say the easiest way is to go to our website and just put in to search video sharing program. You can register online or you can call our police department. I also once again encourage residents to register for code red. That will allow, if you want to know what's going on and instead of calling your alderman, which of course you can do, or going on next door, you can sign up on code red and you'll get a, a, an announcement via email or text if there's something significant happening. Again, go to our website, plug in the words code red and you will be able to sign up there um, I want to assure the residents we will direct our full attention to any crime issues like this and continue to explore technologies or cooperative efforts to combat serious crime, such as carjacking and armed robberies. Um, but as I say, due to the ongoing nature of these criminal investigations, uh, it would, it's not appropriate to comment on those specific um, incidents. And if any aldermen uh, have questions, please feel free to contact the city manager or the police chief. A um, couple other things. Um, 
less serious, I wanted to thank uh, Bill Anishevitz and Lauren Wolf for coordinating our recent 911 20th anniversary ceremony and thank the police, fire department, and public work, public work staff for what was really an excellent ceremony. Um, I want to thank our Public Arts Commission and Opus. Uh, we dedicated the portal sculpture um, over behind on the east side of the Opus development, which we now call the Mark. Um, it's a beautiful piece there, and um, we had a, a, a it was a good dedication. Um, also, Spring Road Association for the Family Fest they put on this past Saturday, which had almost record attendance. I think people are ready to get out. And finally, I congratulate the Elmhurst Heritage Foundation for a record-breaking uh, beer fest. Uh, they sold out, uh, I, think, I think if I got it right, there were 500 tickets last year, and this year they sold 700 before it started and let in another 25 or 50. I shouldn't say let in accepted their donation to come in and then had to start turning them away. City manager was there, uh, a number of aldermen were there. I couldn't tell because of the, the mask and the, and the whatever. Alderman Deuter, uh, Alderman Dunn was there, Alderman Brennan, I don't know if I missed anyone. Our city treasurer was there counting the money. So it was a good event, Alderman Baramus. Um, and uh, 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 Kathy uh, Jordan uh, corresponded with me today to thank the council for all the support, and I do. That's all I have, city manager. start that over thank you mayor um, the uh, the only report item I have tonight is the uh, presentation and overview of the five-year uh, capital budget um, this is an annual event I know that many aldermen have seen this in the past however we do have some new aldermen so I do want to take a little bit of time to explain how we get to our capital budget um, um, and then uh, I'll also start that um, I'm sure there will be a number of questions regarding items in the uh, capital budget. What we've done in the past is had uh, committees address those questions for whatever that item may be. As an example, 90% of this is going to be public works. So if there's questions on specific projects, what we've done is taken that to the public works committee. If it's a question about the police station or something like that, public affairs and safety and so forth. Um, so if that's how you want to operate we can go about that way so thank you I will start with uh, the 2022 budget schedule uh, we started back in June by putting together the uh, capital budget worksheets distributed to the departments and uh, moved through that process getting them into the finance department inputting them reviewing them with finance with myself and we get to today's uh, presentation of the five-year capital expenditure budget. So the objective of the five-year KEB is to identify and create a comprehensive plan for the long-range major capital expenditures necessary uh, for uh, the city. Now, these are not set in stone. They vary from year to year, uh, depending on what our priorities are. Uh, perhaps something um, is... Uh, takes a higher priority uh, because of wear and tear. Um, and then, of course, funding uh, plays a big role in uh, how we spread this out. So in Elmhurst, capital expenditures are identified as an expenditure of 25000 or more that result in the acquisition or construction of fixed assets intended to be held or used for a period of 10 years or more. We classify these... Um, into one of six categories, uh, one being the most essential to maintain that current level of service, such as uh, the police facility, um, and second, necessary to comply with state or federally mandated standards. An example would be uh, stormwater and sanitary sewers. The third is replacement or renovation of existing obsolete and deteriorating facilities. This could be uh, street replacement, resurfacing, 
um, and maintenance of city buildings. The fourth is to improve the safety of citizens and, and or employees. And an example of that would be bike paths or sidewalks. The fifth is result in increased productivity or reduced energy consumption consistent with sustainability policy. An example of that would be the brine machine that we have in the budget or electric charging facilities. And then finally, uh, items that contribute to the economic development uh, of the city, such as the facade program or the metro station. We further then rank these into um, expenditures uh, A through D as essential with immediate need. Uh, B is essential but may be delayed. C, optional but beneficial to the city through increased productivity. And finally, D, optional but beneficial to the city in social, cultural, or aesthetic way. So this table uh, summarizes the five-year KEB by priority. Um, as you can see, it's a very large number at the end, $251 million. Uh, but that inc incorporates a lot of items uh, throughout the city. Uh, so this is up from last year. And uh, I would say mainly that is due to increased uh, construction and labor costs. Uh, as we all know, that has been increasing uh, significantly over the last year. Um, we, we hope by the time we get to uh, some of those priorities that uh, those prices will come back down. Uh, the next slide shows a pie chart of the expenditures and how they're broken down. Uh, starting in the top left, that's the municipal utility fund. And then working clockwise, we have the parking fund. We have the general fund, which is further broken out uh, to the right as um, I, um, IT, um, computer issues, uh, public safety, the museum. Um, I, I would call it miscellaneous public works. Um, then we have street maintenance and uh, public works uh, public benefit. Uh, working on the pie chart, then we have uh, the uh, MFT fund, our TIF funds, our stormwater fund, and finally vehicle replacement. Now, of course, the flip side of that, we have to balance that through funding sources. <coughs> um, as you can see, our largest kind of what I would call a catch-all uh, to make sure that things balance would be the GO bonds and IEPA loans. Uh, the IEPA loans go uh, directly towards water and sewer, sanitary sewer uh, improvements. And then uh, bonds will cover some of the miscellaneous projects. Then we have other um, revenues that come in, such as the parking system, the municipal utility fund, TIF funds, uh, significant federal and state grants uh, this year, next year, and uh, possibly after that with um, federal um, infrastructure um, legislation that we expect to see. Uh, and then we have motor fuel tax, uh, the, uh, the CIF fund, uh, stormwater, general fund, and uh, other agencies that we may receive. Uh, one thing I want to further break down is uh, the capital improvement fund, which is um, uh, a number of uh, taxes that we receive. And a significant portion of that is the state income tax. That's a tax that we receive based on population. We have developed a policy where we dedicate 80% of that to the CIF, the Capital Improvement Fund. Uh, we also have a quarter percent home rule sales tax, where 33% of that is dedicated to the CIF. Uh, we have a telecommunications tax, and a portion of that is dedicated to the CIF. We have rental income from the 180 Park building uh, that we dedicate towards CIF. We also have the SSA payments for new sidewalks, which is a direct payback for um, bonds or loans that we've put out there. And then interest income and grants that uh, make up the uh, uh, CIF. Uh, the next table uh, gets a little jumbled, but uh, it has a breakdown of where we are with the GO bond issues for capital projects and uh, the IEPA loans for capital projects. GO bonds, we generally have taken out in the past for stormwater issues, uh, some uh, municipal utility um, items such as the meter replacement in 2017. Uh, but you can see on the list at the bottom that a significant portion of these have been for stormwater projects uh, as we've gone through. 
<clears throat> including the upcoming um, the upcoming stormwater pump lift stations that uh, need to be um, rebuilt. Uh, the next slide shows uh, current and proposed GO bonds for stormwater projects. As the council knows, Public Works Committee um, earlier this year prioritized remaining projects uh, for us to look at, and uh, that was based on funding as we move forward. Again, nothing set in stone on that, but uh, when funds do become available, when direction is given to us to issue bonds for that, uh, we have those priorities. And then capital projects below that, which are in no particular order, um, except alphabetically. <laughs> um, so we have the eventual replacement of Fire Station 1. That's the station to the north. It's our oldest uh, facility and uh, has some issues that are going on with it. Uh, we thought that at one point we were going to have some land from uh, the state of Illinois, from IDOT, uh, between Lake Street and 290. However, IDOT has uh, withdrawn that offer, so we continue to work on that with our legislators to see if there's any, um, any movement in that. Right uh, next project is the police station facility. This is something that we did talk about a couple of years ago, pre-COVID. Uh, pre um, there's a need, a uh, space need, and uh, an efficiency need for the police station. And so we'll continue that conversation with the uh, Public Affairs and Safety Committee on uh, what, what the future of that building looks like. Uh, then we have some miscellaneous improvements at the Public Works facility, which is 20 years old now, uh, that need to be done. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, some storm station um, rebuilds, and then the, uh, the Route 83 uh, pedestrian bridge, which uh, we had the open house for last week. <coughs> Uh, the next slide will uh, illustrate expenditures that are funded by the Capital Improvement Fund, which I just detailed on the revenues. Uh, it includes stormwater, streets and sidewalks, uh, public safety buildings, public works building, parking improvements, equipment, and uh, some debt service. And then specifically, if we can talk a little bit, um, what we fund out of there, um, one is the annual street resurfacing program. Uh, we are trying to make up for uh, some, of, I guess, time lost in 2020 when we cut back significantly on that program. But rather than try to make it all up in one year, we've proposed that we would make it up over uh, five years. Um, so you see a slight increase to the um, annual expenditure. Um, and some of the projects that we do are multi-year, uh, with engineering being in one year, project following in the next construction year. Um, I know it, uh, it cites a KEB page in here. It's actually page 37 um, on the uh, annual street resurfacing program. Um, so we just were off by one. Sorry about that. Next slide will show a couple of other more specific projects. Uh, we have the First Street Park <coughs> Avenue Bridge deck replacements to be done. Uh, we have uh, been analyzing those over the years to uh, make sure that uh, we, we replace them at the right time. Uh, it's always uh, a better, um, a cheaper project if we can maintain them versus let them uh, fail and have to replace everything. And so we are going to um, replace the deck, not the superstructure, but the decking on it needs to be redone. And so we'll be working on those over the next uh, four years. And that's on page 71 of the keb. And then one of the specific projects that we're looking at is Brush Hill from Euclid to Commonwealth. Um, I believe we have some grant dollars for that, uh, in addition to motor fuel tax dollars we'll be using. Next, we are looking at Crescent Avenue from uh, Van Buren, uh, excuse me, Crescent Avenue from Poplar uh, to the east end. We are working with IDOT on the very end of that. Uh, I believe that's where they purchased a piece of property to use for um, access to the 290, 294 project. And uh, we're looking if we can shorten that, that resurfacing up, maybe even eliminate some of that street area as we've done elsewhere. Um, and then a little bit of Van Buren on the west side of town that needs to be uh, redone. Um, in addition, we are working with uh, the village of Villa Park 
uh, on resurfacing Villa Avenue. We are responsible for a portion of that. Uh, I believe jurisdiction is um, for police is to uh, Villa Park, but since we border that, uh, they asked us uh, to participate, and uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, not only does it uh, act as a roadway, but uh, that's where the Salt Creek Greenway comes out for a short portion to uh, to head north um, over the tracks. So it's an important um, uh, vehicle and pedestrian uh, project. Uh, next is uh, the Butterfield and York intersection improvements. This is something that's been on the books for probably 10 years, at least since the hospital moved south. There were three intersections that we were responsible to, t to improve. Uh, two of them have been done, um, and this is the third. So we do have some IDOT funds that have been uh, sitting and waiting. Um, there were, we had an open house on this project as well last week. And uh, it improves just some slight, some slight enlarging of the uh, the turn radius on uh, a couple of the corners, and then median uh, improvements as well. I have asked our engineers to look in, to talk to ComEd about what it would take to uh, underground the utilities that cut diagonal through that intersection. Um, I. I think that's kind of a safety issue as far as uh, vision. Uh, it would aesthetically improve the uh, intersection as well. And so we're looking to get a cost estimate from ComEd on what that might be. And then we'll come back and talk to the council and see if that's something that we can accomplish. Uh, the next item is switching to the storm station rehab projects. <clears throat> as you see from the list, we have six of these that, uh, I'm sorry, we have three, four of these that um, uh, uh, work with the levee system that was put in in the early 90s. Uh, so basically what these storm stations do is pump storm at a certain level. They pump storm water up and over the berm uh, when we get heavy rains. Uh, you've probably seen them going. If you've been along the prairie path after a big storm, you'll see the one um, that, that flows at uh, Berkeley and Adams. Um, and, um, excuse me, that's at Berkeley, not Adams. Um, but uh, what we've done with uh, our utility folks is prioritize these as far as size, age, cost, and tried to spread these out as much as possible. Um, they're, they're, no, they're not cheap, but they perform a very vital, a vital function uh, for the city. Um, so we're looking to spread those out over the course of uh, four or five years. And uh, the council approved using some of the uh, American Rescue Plan funds to, uh, to do these projects. We'll also be using some TIF $3 to uh, improve the one at uh, Utley uh, this year. Uh, next slide uh, gets into a little bit more detail about some of the other Projects that we uh, undertake with the dollars, the city parking lot resurfacing programs. Uh, not only is that resurfacing, but uh, council direction was to take a look at all city parking lots when we resurface them, see if they can act as stormwater detention as well. Uh, so we do, we do review that as we uh, dig into the engineering. Uh, we have a number of IT priorities that are out there, uh, including cybersecurity and uh, uh, usual equipment such as PCs and laptops. Uh, we'll be undertaking the ERP system this year with the help of the uh, uh, American Rescue Plan dollars as well. Um, then we get to, we turn to water and sewer and the utility fund. Um, for those who have been here a while, you know we've undertaken quite a bit of work at the wastewater treatment plant. I don't think a year goes by where we don't talk about that. Uh, we've tried to spread that out as much as possible. Uh, some systems we have run to failure at the wastewater treatment plant and we've needed to replace them. Uh, Stan and Paul Burroughs have done a, a great job of trying to kind of feather those out a little bit more as we can uh, to see which pieces uh, we can uh, hold off on. Uh, we are highly dependent on IEPA loans uh, for all those improvements, uh, but they're certainly necessary. And then of course, along with that goes the um, uh, the distribution and collection system that are in the streets. Uh, we try to keep consistent in replacing those each year as well so that we're on a certain cycle. Uh, there, a lot of that uh, detail is talked about at the Public Works Committee in uh, how long we can uh, possibly even push that out. Uh, I got a little bit ahead of myself, I think. Next slide uh, shows you the wastewater treatment plant. 
um, which I know that uh, Paul Burris is happy to give anybody a tour of if you're interested. I know that a few aldermen have taken him up on that and find it it's actually fascinating the way that uh, that system works. Um, so Leah, if you can uh, switch to the next, actually two slides. Um, we get to a little bit of detail on what's left at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, we have a number of systems that we're rebuilding. Uh, over the years, you've heard us talk a lot about uh, phosphorus removal though. Uh, that is uh, something that is uh, coming through IEPA or EPA regulations. It's a very expensive uh, system for us to implement, but I will tell you that everything we design has that in mind so that at no point will we have to go backwards and uh, change anything uh, to implement that. We work with the um, Conservation Foundation and the uh, Salt Creek um, Water Group to uh, make improvements to the creek, which aerate the water, which helps push off the need for uh, the phosphorus improvement. Uh, but we know that someday that will come to an end and we will have to implement phosphorus removal. Uh, next item, switching to the parking system fund, uh, gives you an idea of what, um, what improvements we have in mind uh, moving forward uh, for that. I know that uh, over the last year or two, the parking system fund has taken quite a hit uh, with people not using the garages because they're not commuting to the city uh, as much. Uh, we are gonna bolster that a little bit with the ARP funds uh, to get some of those projects done. Uh, if we stop maintaining the decks, then deterioration sets in and it only costs us more in the future. So we've been very diligent about that and uh, in maintaining those. And then uh, stormwater management and flood mitigation, um, something that has certainly uh, been a theme for the last decade for us. Uh, we have a lot in place. We still have some additional work to do, but again, that's uh, uh, prioritized by the Public Works Committee and a um, matter of determining what the funding uh, will be for those. Next are the, uh, the Tax Increment Financing Funds, or TIF. Uh, we have a number of projects that are built into the three TIFs that remain. Uh, the downtown TIF, um, we have some uh, streetscape, the facade program, uh, possibly some charging stations, and then the big one is the train station at the bottom, uh, and, and we'll touch on that in a bit. Um, on the North York uh, TIF, we have uh, sidewalk improvements and also uh, paving of York Street from Crestview to Grand. You may have noticed that the county is undertaking some improvements there now. That is traffic signal improvements and a slight widening of the, uh, the radius on those turns. We did talk to the county about um, possibly working together on some uh, landscaping, uh, but they had no interest in that right now and said, talk to us when you're ready to uh, work on your plans to improve that intersection. You may recall there's a referral um, at committee right now to discuss gateways and improvements like that. But uh, the county is strictly uh, traffic signal improvement and uh, just curb and some sidewalk work. And then uh, TIF 4 and 5 uh, combined to do some lift station force main replacements uh, with some of that funding. And then last but not least, uh, the metro station. Uh, we continue to move forward on that. And uh, the, the downside, of course, is that every day that we uh, can't get moving, the price tag seems to increase uh, significantly. So we are pushing as hard as we can on that, working with IDOT working with the UP and uh, um, um, property interest and such. And so we are continuing to push that as, as hard and as fast as we can uh, to get that in place. So next, what we do with this is we take the, uh, the capital that are in the first two years, roll that into the operating budget. Um, as I said, to start, uh, we have committee review of uh, any uh, capital items and uh, questions on city department budgets. Uh, the finance committee will undertake a review of the revenues um, and the estimates that staff puts together. And then we bring the final compilation to the council for review um, in generally starting in October. And for those who are new to the council, each Monday night, 
we will have a committee of the whole meeting immediately after city council or immediately after committee meetings and uh, um, get through the budget and review each department uh, go line by line if that's what uh, uh, for any questions that uh, alderman may have and I extend an invitation to anybody who would like to sit down and review the budget with me and uh, Leah and the department directors uh, if you have specific questions we're happy to go through that process um, we do need uh, to have a budget approved uh, we prefer it before the last meeting in December uh, we prefer the first meeting in December along with the tax levy um, but we do have to have that on file with the county uh, before the uh, the end of the year um, Mr. Mayor, that is my brief presentation of the um, capital budget. Uh, happy to answer general questions uh, tonight. So uh, I think a lot of the slides that you, a couple of them are in the book, but a lot of them are not. I wonder if you want to share these slides with the council, maybe put on the website because it will help give the overview that the newer aldermen may need to see how to translate what you're talking about to the uh, capital budget book. All right. We have it posted to board docs along with your capital budget, so you can view it from anywhere that you are. Anywhere? Anywhere. Internet, anywhere service? internet service? All right, very good. Um, questions from the council regarding what we have so far? Alderman Polumsky. Thank you, I have a question not about any specific item. I'm just looking at the overall picture um, this is just maybe minutia. I'm curious why the, the keb cut, cuts off at 25,000 and, you know, so we take a look at anything at or above that, but city manager authorities at 20,000 20, and under, like what's with that little wiggle room? I don't know that the two are related. Okay. I believe state statute has been amended to go to 25,000. So if the council wanted to amend the purchasing policy, you could give me the authority up to 25,000. Yeah. Ours is just what it kind of always has been. I believe the 25,000 for a capital item comes from a GFOA standard. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Any other questions? Alderman Hill. Alderman Hill. Thank you, Mayor. Um, is there an idea when those that are listed as priority B essential but may be delayed any timeline that's not apparent here where they might become priority A, uh, which is essential and immediate need? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, it, uh, it would, I guess they would move up if uh, the priority A's were addressed and uh, there was available funding. Uh, would be one way that they would move up uh, and it's a matter of uh, policy and what the council deems as um, more essential than uh, uh, I can't say more essential if it's essential but uh, more necessary than uh, than another thank you Alderman Brennan thank you mayor <clears throat> excuse me so um, city manager it's, there's an infrastructure bill in front of you know uh, our representatives in in DC are, are from a, a state or local perspective do we have insight into what's in that bill and and what impacts it may have hopefully positively on the city of Elmhurst I think it will have positive impacts when uh, the mayor Alderman Deuter and I met with uh, Congressman Quigley he was quick to bring up that um, that there will be an infrastructure bill and to kind of stay tuned there you want to i don't know that we have anything more on it yet but i i think our congressman knows that we're here um and it's a great you know he'll keep us posted okay. yeah and if i would add to that when he's advised us like that in the past we've been able to put together plans obviously we have a lot of plans here that could be funded uh, the most significant one in the past was the train station that we were able to get together and, and get grant funding for okay. so we we're aware of it we're monitoring everything that we can number of engineering firms are uh, doing the same as you would imagine to make us aware of uh, possible dollars that are aware that are um, out there IML is doing the same Metropolitan uh, Mayor's Caucus. So we, we do have a lot of people monitoring that for us. Okay, thank you. Alderman Toludo. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, City Manager, uh, would you would would you be able to um, summarize the top offhand? Summarize the top because I'm going to set up my own like meeting and go through some questions and not waste everyone's time tonight. But would you be able to summarize off the top of your head the top three to four things that are different in this year's keb than last year? For example, one of the things that stands out to me, um, and I'll, I have to go back and, and do my detailed comparison, would be the 19 some million dollars that is now earmarked in the keb for potential future stormwater projects. That'd be an example of like kind of a major thing that's different from this year, from the last year's keb. Yeah, certainly that's one of them. Uh, as I said, stormwater's always been a priority of ours and um, as uh, I believe outgoing Chairman Kennedy put forth the report to prioritize remainder of projects. Um, so that is certainly one. Um, I think overall just price increases because of materials and labor, as I started with, that's a significant jump. Uh, and one thing I would point to is the, train, the metro station that, that has seen significant increases, estimated increases. Um, and then probably IT um, has seen um, significant increases as well. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Dunn. Um, yes, I, uh, one slide was, uh, was talking about, or talking to the TIF funds and some of the projects going on there. Uh, we have designated <coughs> force main improvements for TIF four and five. Um, I'm a little surprised by that. That's normally an MUF type um, project com, com, you know, that's usually paid for out of you know, water, water bills. Um, so how did, what, what was the advent of that to be funded from the TIF, that, that'd be the funding strategy. And then how, those are still fairly new TIFs, so I'm not even sure if we have that kind of fund sitting in those. Can, can you speak to that issue? Um, so we have used TIF for infrastructure improvements in, in other places. Um, and where possible, uh, we, we try to supplement it in a TIF one, that's what it's for, is it, that's what a, a, why a TIF is in place. And two, the, uh, the municipal utility fund is struggling. And so if we can help with the TIF dollars, not general fund, but if we can help with TIF dollars, uh, we, we, we try to do that. Um, I, I'll have to dig up a couple examples, no pun intended. I'll have to uh, find a couple of examples uh, to illustrate that, Alderman. Yeah, I know there were some small ones, but that's almost $10 million, yeah. so that, that's a fair amount of funding. Um, just a separate question uh, on the pie chart showing the funding sources. Uh, we have geo bonds and other um, loans, uh, debt, uh, you know, debt uh, vehicles that are close to 40% of the funding source. I don't remember it, that piece of ever being that big as a percent. Uh, my, wrong in that uh i don't no you're not wrong uh we use that as kind of a catch-all in the end so that we can balance out projects uh, expenditures and revenues um, as i said those there, there's no nothing set in stone that that says we're going to take out 97 million dollars in bonds and loans uh, but i just, my goal in putting together the cab is to make sure that the council is aware of what we have to do over the next five years it's not all going to get done in five years, um, but I just I want to make sure that the council is aware of that, so that when we're talking about priorities, you know. Um, so we do use that as as that balance to uh, uh, to make sure that they fit together. Okay. And Mayor, if I can, I'd be remiss if I if I didn't say thank you to Leah Lopez, uh, Matt Plyman, and Ryan Bruins for putting this together. Leah's hiding in the corner there. Uh, it is our first post Tom 18 budget, and I know that they've really put a lot of effort into it. So, okay, um, I will also say, you know, the committee should, you know, as we 
talked as I've talked about with some of the chairs if something falls within your area um, obviously a lot will fall in finance and public works but other things could fall maybe in public affairs and safety and you want to take a closer look that would certainly be appropriate particularly if like it's a police station or a fire station kind of overlaps um, I will also add that it, I was reminded that the train station project was one where Congressman Quigley told us we ought to have a plan and that led to it. So looking at some of these other projects to have a plan, even if we can't do it, if money comes around and they say, does anyone have a project ready to be funded? We're like, we can say we do, we have the plan. Um, and for the newer aldermen, um, you know, the, there is the, the introduction uh, that talks about the, the city manager put together the five, six pages is particularly important, I think, to review to get a f handle on what this capital budget is all about. Other discussion? All right. Um, with that, um, any other reports from appointed or elected officials? Any item eight, any other business? <coughs> that item. <coughs> Oh, sorry, uh, Alderman Hill. Thank you. I just uh, like to take this opportunity to uh, highlight the homecoming parade celebrating the 150th anniversary of Elmhurst University, the sesquicentennial. Sorry, I'm not saying that correctly. Sesquicentennial. <laughs> uh, the parade will be this Saturday uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, September 25th on streets directly adjacent to the university. Please attend if you can. Well, Alderman Hill, that reminds me that the old time baseball game is uh, Sunday at the uh, university and there'll be two fine teams playing. There'll be the, I don't think we have team names yet, but the city of Elmhurst versus the Elmhurst University. And I told the president of the university, I don't want to see guys that are all 20 years old that bring their own bats and look like they're right off the baseball team. But are any of you aldermen playing? I, some are all right. Good. Alderman Toluda, you're not playing this year. You have to. I maybe miss the invitation. I don't know. All right. Well, we'll we can we can probably squeeze you in. But um, so whether you're playing or not, if you want to come out, it's a very interesting event, and I believe it's uh, one o'clock, um, and it's uh, it, um, or is it right next behind the. On the, on the quad yeah Mall. yeah center campus right all right other items all right can i take a motion to adjourn please Amen. alderman mulliner with a motion alderman park with a second all in favor say aye aye, aye. all in favor say nay we're adjourned thank you <laughs> <laughs>